Well, good morning. I am certainly honored to be here, and it was great to be here uh, to hear Gordon this morning. Wonderful, beautiful. Um, yeah, I've been with Great, Great Commission Media based in Finland for the last 16 years, and uh, it's been a joy to be a part of that. Uh, 35 years before that, I pastored four different churches, so uh, Colleen and I have been married 51 years, and and uh, just uh, have been very, very, very much blessed. Um, I'm going to start in Acts 16. <clears throat> you can turn there if you want this morning. Um, uh, had a chance before service to meet my good friend Jim Black, who you all know from here, and uh, had had the joy of being in their home, sharing a meal with them and. Jim and I have had a number of conversations, <clears throat> and uh, before service, he, he came up to me, and he put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, Dave, just don't screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Wonderful word of encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> Only a true friend would, would say that, you know, instead of trying to be super spiritual or something. Acts 16, verse 1. Uh, Paul came also to Derbe and to Lystra. A disciple was, was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were in Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted this man to go with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. Now, while they were passing through the cities, they were delivering the decrees which had been decided upon by the apostles and the elders who were in Jerusalem for them to observe. So the churches were being strengthened in the faith and were increasing in number daily. They passed through the Phrygian and Galatian region, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And after they came to Messiah, they were trying to go to, into Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. And passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing, appealing to him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for servants of the Lord like Gordon who faithfully served you pastorally uh, for so many years uh, beyond reproach. Uh, we rejoice in that. We thank you, Lord, for him and his wife and the years they've, that you've given them together as well, Lord. Thank you, God, for the privilege of, of just sharing a few minutes from the word this morning. I pray that, God, you would speak to our hearts today. I pray that we would all be Samuels today that would be saying, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. It's uh, the spring of 49 B.C. Uh, Paul and his new associate Silas, one of the leaders from Jerusalem, according to Acts chapter 15, is now traveling with him. Uh, the, the Paul Barnabas story is another message. I'm not going to take time to share that this morning. Very interesting message. How that two mighty men of God could disagree. That, that's, that's, a, that's another message, but, but very important. Um, so so Paul, Paul and Silas are, are now on their journey. And in Lystra they find Timothy uh, who joins them there. And, and <clears throat> according to Acts 16 verse 10, uh, it seems as well that Luke joined them. For Luke says, when he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia. So, so now there's four guys. There's, there's Paul, Silas, there's, there's Timothy, and, and there's Luke, the, the doctor, the, the physician who's traveling with them. So they travel northwest into the regions of Phrygia and Galatia. Uh, they're now uh, at the northwest border of Asia that we know to be Turkey, right up by the Black Sea. And, uh, and the plan was to go east. That was their plan. It was logical. It made sense. 
to them. There was great need. There was great opportunity. It was an unreached people group. All right? So, my goodness, they were right there. They were right on the border. Why not? This is, this is exactly where we should go. But amazingly, uh, verse 6 and verse 7 says, The Holy Spirit forbade them to speak the word in Asia. Verse 7 says they tried to go into Bithynia. In fact, you know, there's, there's this sense where, where it, it seems that Paul, you know, the first message that came to him was kind of like, I can't believe that this is being spoken to me. And so he tried to go into Bithynia, but then he was checked by the Holy Spirit. The word forbidden means to, hide, to, to hinder, to deny, to prevent. The word permit means to restrain, to check. And so Galatia, Phrygia, Bithynia were regions directly northeast of where he was at in Mysia. And, uh, and Paul was planning on going all the way to the Black Sea. It made sense. It was logical. It, it was an unreached area. But they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Jesus did not permit them, did not allow them to go there. This is an interesting New Testament uh, precedent that is being established here that sometimes we don't think much about. The need is not the call. I hope you heard that. The need is not the call. The, the need is everywhere. <laughs> you know, and, and, and we could be, you know, uh, feeling the pressure that God has called us to do everything. God has not called you to do everything, but he has called you to do something. He has called you somewhere on purpose. You know, I, I'm, I'm an old dog now. I'm 74 years old. And so, you know, God still has plans and purposes for my life. He's got plans and purposes for your life. No, no matter what your age is, no matter where you are in life, you, you may be an elect, uh, an electrician or, or a plumber, you may be a doctor or a nurse, you may, you may be a school teacher, whatever. That is your mission field. That's where God has called you. Be faithful to what God has called you to. The need is not the call. I, I've had the privilege of traveling um, many places in the world because of our ministry. Uh, ministry is based in Finland, but as you saw, kind of reaches out all over the world. Met with, with many missionaries. Um, and I'm convinced some were not called. <laughs> they're, they're unhappy. They're miserable on the mission field. Um, in fact, it, uh, statistics tell us that 5,000 missionaries actually come home every year. Uh, and many of them are because of tension and, and the difficulty of relationship. The need is not the call. You know, I think, I think some people felt that it was a spiritual thing maybe for them to go into ministry when God was called them to Microsoft. You know, so, so it's a matter of, of, of simply discovering where God has placed you. Another example of this is, of course, in Acts chapter 8 with Stephen, who was martyred and, and buried in Jerusalem, and Saul ravages the church and, and drags many into prison. The New Testament church is scattered, and a, and a young deacon in the church in Jerusalem uh, uh, who, who was a deacon along, with, along with, with Stephen by the name of Philip, ends up going, ends up in Samaria, begins to preach Christ there. <laughs> and jaw-dropping experiences happen. I mean, I mean people come to Christ and, and they're, they're saved and they're baptized and people that were demon-possessed were delivered and people who were paralyzed and and, and, and sick and body were healed. It, this, was, this was revival. It was amazing. It was wonderful. It was glorious. One day the angel of the Lord came to this young man, Philip, and says, I want you to go south into Gaza. It made no sense. It was not logical. What? You're kidding me. You want me to leave this? You want me to leave this revival to go to Gaza? The interesting thing is, is while he was there, he met a court official of Ethiopia who was saved and baptized, and, and through him, the gospel came to Ethiopia. Philip never did return to Samaria. <laughs> Sometimes we, we kind of claim ownership of something that God has done through us, and, 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 and here, 
uh, he had to be willing to release it because the need is not the call. Paul could have shrugged off the check of the Holy Spirit easily. He could have talked him into, him, himself into going to Bithynia. He could have resisted the check as illogical. Did he know what God's plan was yet? No, God, God did not share that with him. He did not know what God had planned for him. He did not have clear direction. There was a sense of, of there are times when God puts us in that position where we're between where he has led us to where he wants us to go. How many like to wait? None of us like to wait. It's a difficult time when, when we're really not sure what God is calling us to next. I'm thankful for the verse that was shared this morning from John chapter 10. My sheep, what? Hear my voice. Can you say that? My sheep hear my voice. Know it. Embrace it. Be convinced of it. How many know that you are not too complex for God to speak to you? Amen. God knows how to get a, get a hold of you. He knows how to communicate to you in a way that you understand. Aren't you grateful that God speaks to children like Samuel? <laughs> you know, if God can speak to little children, he can speak to you. He can minister to you. He can minister to me. In fact, Romans chapter 8 tells us all who are being led by the Spirit of God are, are the children of God. There's, there's no distinction. It's not a matter of saying, you know, uh, if you've gone to seminary, you're led by the Spirit of God. If you've done this or that, you're led by the... No, 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 no. No, no. All of God's children can be led by the Spirit of God. It's a marvelous reality. So what does Paul do? He, he goes in the direction that's only open to him at that point. He's in Mysia. He can't go east, so he, he goes to the coast. He goes to Troas and waits and waits and waits. Troas was a pivotal port city between Asia Minor and Europe. It was a tourist city, in fact, and many people from Macedonia would actually travel to Troas uh, to shop. And uh, the Macedonians were very distinctive. You could tell the Macedonian men because they wore these tall brimmed hats. And so uh, Paul saw many Macedonians. And he, and he, and he said, oh, there, there's a Macedonian. I can tell because of their distinctive headwear that they were wearing. So Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke wait on the shores of the Aegean Sea, not sure what God had brought them there for. How long did they wait? We, we don't really know. The scripture doesn't identify time here. We don't know if it was a day or a week or a month. We, we don't really know how long it was, but it was a period of time. And, but one night, surprisingly for Paul, one night a vision appeared to him in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing and appealing to him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia Relieved, <laughs> concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Things began to move swiftly. They go into Macedonia. The first convert is a woman by the name of Lydia, a seller of purple, a very w uh, wealthy businesswoman who, who was a blessing to them. A slave girl is delivered from demons. Paul and Silas, in the midst of all this, is beaten and put in stocks. And you think, what? I thought we were called of God to do this. Well, they were. But that doesn't mean that sometimes there is resistance and issues that we face. Do not question the call of God just because of struggle or trouble that you might have in your life. Because that's exactly what was going on in their life here. As you know, there's a great earthquake and the doors open, the chains fall off. You know the story well. It reminds me of Acts chapter 12. We have that dilemma of Acts chapter 12 because we have two events that happen at the same time. We have a young man, a disciple of Jesus by the name of James, and we have a young man, a disciple of Jesus by the name of Peter. James is thrust 
threw with the sword and killed, and Peter is marvelously delivered. I'm thankful for Deuteronomy 29, 29, which says the secret things belong to God, but that which he chooses, he reveals. Why was James killed and Peter delivered? Why was Paul and Silas delivered here in this port? We don't know. What, was it that James had forgotten his morning devotions? I don't think so. How many have experienced some mystery in life? Huh? So many of us. Mystery. Things that we don't yet understand. Maybe we never will until we get to heaven and by then it won't make any difference, right? The jailer is saved, the family is saved, they come to Christ. It's marvelous. And the gospel begins to come into Europe. And that's why you're here today. <laughs> Most of you have ancestral relationships that come from Europe. Authentic turning points in history are few. They don't happen every day. It's every once in a great while there are authentic turning points in history. But this is one of them. This is one of them. I'm almost done. Everybody said amen to that. Okay. <laughs> So the gospel goes westward. All of Europe hears the gospel because of Paul's decision to respond to the illogical call of God in his life away from Bithynia to Macedonia. Now does that mean that God abandoned Maced uh, Bithynia? Of course not. If, if you read the, the first book of Peter, you, you see at the very beginning, at the first book of P Peter, it says, those scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. And so, and so Paul is actually writing to believers who end up in that part of the world. God had another plan. How many are grateful it doesn't all depend on you? How many know you're replaceable? <laughs> That's really important for all of us to understand very clearly. And so God used other people other than Paul. He didn't have to use Paul. He could use somebody else there. But Paul ends up going to Europe. And it's amazing to me, in 325 AD, the Council of Nicaea declares the full deity of Christ. And where is that? That is in West Bithynia. <laughs> amazing. So God did not abandoned those people but he had another plan but he had a specific plan for Paul and I am so grateful that Paul responded to the illogical call of God in his life even though it made no sense why should we not go to Bithynia why would you not allow us to go there because God had another plan Revelation chapter 2 and 3 many many different beautiful messages Pastor Dave, if he hasn't preached on that yet, I, I know he will. It's a wonderful series. But there's one thing that Jesus says to all seven churches. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. The only requirement is having an ear to hear. The only requirement is a desire to hear the voice of God. If you have a desire to hear the voice of God, you will hear. Now, now you and I have a problem, okay? Our problem is this, okay? Our problem is media. Our problem is noise. Our problem is good things like worship music or preaching that we hear on the radio or television, or whatever, or, or blogs, or all this stuff. It's called noise, all right? And, it's, and, and, and so much of that is wonderful and, and, and beneficial to all of our lives. However, if you want to hear the voice of God, you have to have seasons regularly, I would say daily, where you get quiet, where you shut the noise out. 
and you get quiet in the presence of God. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. I believe that many times Dave Ogren does not hear the voice of God just because too much noise, too much distraction, too much other stuff flying around. And I need to get quiet. <laughs> How many times in our prayer life we go through prayer, we have our prayer list, you should have things you pray for. I have this morning. I spent about an hour and a half praying for lots of different things this morning. But if we're not careful, we, we get done with what's on our heart and we say goodbye. <laughs> the word is amen, right? We say goodbye. And, and God is saying, wait, 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 wait. I have something I need to say to you today. I wonder how many times God has been disappointed. Oh, Gritty, you did it again. <laughs> you shut me off <laughs> when I wanted to talk to you. Matthew 11, he who has near to hear, let him hear. Mark 4, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Luke 8, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. And lastly, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. You know it's written to the church. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will, what? Hear my voice and open the door. I will come in and I will fellowship with He wants to do that. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants you to hear his voice. So what do we need to be? Simple. How many like simple? I like simple. What do we need to do? We need to be a Samuel. That's all. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Can you close your eyes with me this morning and just say, right out loud, just say, speak, Lord. For your servant is listening. Lord, we just say, forgive us for the times that we've gotten busy with what we thought was important. And we rush off into the business of life when you had something very, very important to speak into our lives. Forgive us for that, Lord. And I pray that every day, every day, every day, we would be open to hearing your voice, even when it's illogical, even when we have plans and this contradicts our plans, even when we don't know what the next step is or how you're going to lead or what it's going to look like. We say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Just before I'm done this morning, if you're here this morning and, and you are in the midst of circumstances, situations right now, today, it may be business, it may be family, it may be something else, but you are in a place right now where you need to hear the voice of God in your life today. I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but I am going to ask you to make an expression of faith. I just want you to stand. If you need to hear God's voice in your life, in your circumstance, right now, just stand. Yeah.
I know I do. <laughs> I know many of you do that are standing. So I'm standing right with you. <laughs> because I too want to hear the voice of God. And so we say this morning, Lord, you see these precious people standing in your presence. It makes you proud to see them stand with a hunger of saying, I want to hear your voice. And we say, speak, Lord. <laughs> We're listening. <laughs> we want to hear your voice. We want to go your way. We want to do what you want us to do. Make it clear to us in a way that we can understand. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for and everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And we've got a special song. God bless you.